So Worldwide Telescope is really, I think, important. We bring together a really, really rich, compelling data environment from which you can bring other data into it as well. The ability to visually represent the environment in 3D, to be able to show that data over time, to bring in other data and look at that and connect it with other data sources. The rich imagery of the universe, the data behind it, the ability to orchestrate these paths through this environment, to easily communicate insight about it. The other benefit of having this integrated simulation of the universe is that we could bring together imagery and data into one place. That would allow both astronomers to look at data sets that were not normally in their domain. But by bringing everything together, it makes it really easy to compare and look at uh, uh, imagery of the sky across multiple wavelengths and perhaps even notice other things that they might not normally look at. So we use Worldwide Telescope in many contexts in our research. You need to see what large regions of the sky look like at many different wavelengths and you need to be able to zoom in and out to many different scales just seamlessly and fluidly so that you don't lose track of kind of where you're looking with respect to the whole galaxy. And I don't know of any other tools that can do that while bringing so much other data other than the data that are on the screen available to you all at once. We connected behind all these objects in the sky links to deep information sources. So if I wanted to get for any particular object, what are all the latest papers that are published about this particular object? We instantly do a query to the astrophysical database, and bring up all the papers that were related to that object. So it makes that really simple. It put a layer, a very usable layer on top of all that infrastructure so that you could finally get to all that data in this very obvious environment, which is the context of the sky. So later this year in 2015, Worldwide Telescope will be open source. And that provides a tremendous opportunity for both the astronomical community and the computer programming community to be able to come together to add functionality to Worldwide Telescope that can serve many, many more needs than those of us here at Microsoft could even imagine. Well, I think Worldwide Telescope in the hands of the astronomy community has just limitless possibility because there is no other system that lets you see online astronomy information in such an integrated, beautiful, seamless environment. The project is going to discover that there is a huge community of very good people who are very excited about improving it, extending it, bringing it into new, into new application areas. There's a whole range of things the World Wide Telescope does that are of value in lots of other domains. So image tiling would be a good example. I think people are going to break it apart and put it back together in ways that we can't possibly predict. The World Wide Telescope puts the whole universe in front of any person who wants to take the time to explore it. And students love that power. They dive deeper, they explore more. There's so many different ways to you know, look at different aspects of the universe, and then you can capture it. We have a very powerful authoring engine within Worldwide Telescope to create what look like highly produced documentaries. But it's as easy to create as PowerPoint. They're interactive at any time. So you have the power of what video can do. At any point you see something interesting, you can pause, you can explore that particular object, access the data beneath it, or you can look at what's around it, or you can see other tours that relate to that object and then branch off and go explore there. We're using Worldwide Telescope in lots of different ways. Worldwide Telescope is really acting um, as a virtual telescope, a virtual observatory. So we can take all the best images from all the world's observatories, stitch them together, layer them together, and uh, zoom in and around the sky. And that's really the way uh, we describe it to our visitors. We're, we're letting them know you're looking at the same software that research astronomers use. This is a real experience. We're not making up a movie. We're giving you a window to the universe. The best experience ever is putting Worldwide Telescope in the hands of a kid or a member of the public where they just cannot believe that this is real astronomy data from real telescopes with really the best resolution we could ever have and that there are all these wavelengths that your eyes can't see and the just general disbelief that people have that this exists is just incredible. I love how inspiring Worldwide Telescope is 
for learners. When they see certain visualizations in Worldwide Telescope, you know, it just pops at them. You know, the, the moons of Jupiter, there's, you know, Jupiter has over 60 moons, and that's a number that a lot of people can memorize. But when you actually show them that this is what all their orbits look like, it's this crazy tangled beehive mess, you know, everybody goes, wow. I think for myself, the thing that always uh was important to me was the role of WWT in inspiring people. Uh, after I give a talk about Worldwide Telescope, I had a dad come up to me and said, you know, I was using Worldwide Telescope with my little five-year-old daughter and she was sitting on my lap and we were exploring this uh, supernova uh, explosion in a, in a galaxy that was just about the Big Dipper. And I thought nothing of it, you know. And then later on, he said, when I walked outside and my, with my daughter, and she was, said, look, Daddy, she pointed up at the sky at the Big Dipper, and she says, that's where the supernova explosion was. And I thought, okay, that's what this is really all about.